Good afternoon, everyone. It's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you're having a great day today. It's Monday afternoon. Uh, has, snow hasn't started yet, but we're supposed to be getting a dump of snow uh, about 9 inches or uh, 15 to 20 centimeters of snow um, overnight, apparently. Uh, but I haven't seen it's. It looks like it's going to do something out there. Uh, it's a beautiful day out there all day today but on, on this. Uh, family Day in, in Ontario. Family Day is a, a government holiday. Uh, just a nice way to spend a day with your family. I spent the day with my family yesterday. So my family today has been uh, my mutts and my cat um, and my records and CDs. <laughs> um, so I wanted to continue my Elves to Discover series through Discog Shuffle. I'm really having a great time with this. And uh, um, it's allowing me to get familiarized again with um, all these great albums that I have in my collection, uh, albums that I haven't listened to in a long time or rediscovered uh, or forgot that I had. And uh, I let the Discog uh, shuffle button uh, choose for me. And then I talk about that album, which is a cool, I think it's cool anyway. And it seems to be working so far. So uh, the last shuffle came up with this album here. This is Nas Lofgren, uh, I Came to Dance. I'll talk about that in just a second. I left the promo sticker on here. This was $2 off, uh, Golden Disc Special. Uh, and it's got uh, an English dollar sign on there. So I don't know where this came from. But um, anyway, we'll talk about that one in just a second. Uh, I wanted to talk first about uh, a couple of CDs I got in the mail uh, from Amazon on Saturday. Just to add to a small collection that I'm starting to grow on this particular band, uh, who I'm really falling in love with. Uh, I had previously uh, this album here. This is a double album by Government Mule called The Deepest End. It's a live album, a tribute album to Alan Woody, the great bass player for uh, not only Government Mule, but uh, Almond Brothers Band, who passed away. And they did a tribute. And... On bass are 14 different members uh, at, uh, at different times during this uh, concert in, uh, in New Orleans. So you've got um, not only Warren Haynes on vocals and guitar, uh, Matt Abs on drums, uh, Danny Lewis on keyboards. You've got on bass uh, Jack Hassey, Les Claypool, Roger Glover from Deep Purple, Mike uh, Gordon. Paul Jackson, Conrad Loz uh, Lozano, uh, Will Lee, Jason Newstead, ex from uh, Metallica, uh, George Porter Jr., Greg Razab, David uh, Shields, uh, or David School, sorry, uh, Rob Wasserman, and Victor uh, Wooten. Just a, a, an amazing array and lineup of bass players to pay tribute to Alan Woody. Great, great live album. Really love it. So that inspired me to get more Government Mule. So I've showed previously on, on another video uh, the two studio albums I have by them. This is Dose. Dose is their second studio album released in 1998. Uh, really great sounding album. Really good. Um, and uh, By a Thread, the ninth studio album by the band. And this one features uh, none other than Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top on one of the tracks. Uh, the track called um, Broken Down on the Brazo. Um, great opening track of the album. So those are the studio albums. But on Saturday, uh, Amazon delivered to me uh, the Telstar Sessions. Government Mule, Telstar Sessions. Um, demos recorded and remastered by Warren Haynes and, and Alan Woody and Matt Apps uh, and six of the tracks were featured on their first album so it's a uh, demo versions of pretty much their first album so uh, really really looking forward to that haven't had a chance to listen to them yet believe it or not uh, busy with my family yesterday today doing other stuff cleaning up Preparing back to work, I just haven't had a chance to listen to a lot of stuff today. So, but um, definitely so happy to have this in my collection. Um, 
yeah, Telstar stations. And this one here, this is Millennium. This is a uh, three CD set, uh, live release uh, at the Roxy Theater, released uh, at the New Year's Eve party in, in uh, 1999. But it was re sorry, it was recorded in 1999, but it was released in 2010, which I don't understand that. But anyway, there's the th CDs there. There's no booklet with this one, but uh, yeah, they're such a live jamming band, southern rock, blues, slide guitar, um, heavy, heavy solos, uh, just remarkable. Um, Warren Haynes has a, a gritty growly type of voice but it's so good fits with the music so happy to have that one so I'm just going to continue my uh, um, growth in government mule um, I'll stick with the CDs because uh, the albums are hard to find and uh, I think these guys sound better on CD just my opinion but I think they would uh, they're a CD type of band and there are some bands that are that are fit for CDs uh, and there's other bands that are fit for albums. Uh, that's why I love both formats. So, anyway, that's uh, a little bit of what uh, I got in the mail. I haven't had a chance to dig much because we've been locked down. So I'm kind of in withdrawal as far as uh, digging for albums. But uh, that's where this series keeps me going. So this one here, now is Lofgren. I came to dance. Of course, uh, uh, remember the E Street Band with Bruce Springsteen. Uh, and also a member of Crazy Horse with Neil Young. Um, also inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the E Street Band in 2014. So previously I had uh, this album here, Night After Night, which is a, a double live album. Um, great uh, live album recorded in 1977. Uh, very underrated guitarist, uh, singer-songwriter. Uh, tunes are great. They're they're upbeat. Um, lots of cool licks throughout. Um, some great orchestra, great piano, and uh, got a great vocals on there. A great live album. Great great live album. So this one here. Um, this is the third studio album released again in 1977. I think a lot of the tracks off of uh, I Came to Dance is on the uh, uh, Night After Night uh, live album as well. Uh, very polished album um, and that's not a dig it just it's very well produced it sounds almost too good to be true um, um, like every note is perfect every every song is perfect there's no what if it's just uh, and that's the criticism of this album when you look at all the reviews and stuff is that it's too well polished um, but uh, I have nothing against that. I have nothing wrong with it, but it, you can tell it sounds that way. Uh, every song is is just perfect from start to finish, and and uh, so that's a tiny bit of not a dig against the album. It's just that uh, if you do listen to it, just be prepared that it, it may sound a little too uh, perfect than normal. Um, it some of the tracks feature Patty Austin on backing vocals, which is cool. Um, and they also do a, tr a track of uh, uh, a version of Happy by the Stones and it's a different track altogether than what uh, what um, uh, the Stones did as far as Happy and uh, it's an enjoyable album for sure I really like it um, great again underrated guitarist um, singer he's sometimes has a Huey Lewis sound to him um, as far as the singing style sorry I just had to move my legs there there we go um, as far as the singing style as far as the sound structure uh, in some ways uh, a Poco Little River Band type of sound um, there's some harder tracks uh, and, you, and there's all kinds of guitar licks throughout the songs as well so the first track is I Came to Dance, uh, catchy, upbeat tune, um, great piano. Uh, there's some horns in there as well. Um, and again, throughout the, uh, throughout the song, there's little lead licks all the way through it. 
Uh, it's a lot of fillers as far as the lead work and as far as the piano and everything else on this track. Uh, Rock Me at Home reminds me again of a Huey Lewis track. Um, just, the, just the beginning of it. Uh, but it's again, great, great track. Uh, home is Where the Heart Is. Uh, nice, easy listening pop tune. Um, and again, more cool licks throughout. He, he does a lot of fills with these licks. Uh, a lot of lead licks all the way through. Um, uh, Code of the Road. Uh, cool little rock and track. Great playing throughout. Gritty vocals on this one as well. So he, he kind of hardens it up a bit on this one. Uh, Happy Ending Kids. Uh, maybe my least favorite track on the album. Um, kind of goes all over the place. And uh, the chorus is, is too gospely like it's too big the got the chorus uh, and there's a couple of tracks like that where the chorus is just overpowering the verse the the the, the, the main part of the song uh, going south love this track so again you go from happy ending kids which isn't all the the greatest song but then you he he gets back into again with the song going south uh, love this track great info great intro sorry um, great bass run in the beginning as well. Uh, guitar licks in the beginning. Um, has kind of an island feel it to it. Um, so it like almost like a, not a Calypso song, but that island feeling uh, in the track. Uh, to a Dreamer, maybe the second weakest track on the album. Um, try to be a try, try to be a rock and tune, but. Um, Again, another one with that huge chorus. Uh, I just don't like. I just don't like it. It's it's. Uh, it doesn't fit in with with him just singing, um, and then all of a sudden you've got this big wide chorus happening. Uh, that works in a build up song. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of uh, I want to know what love is by Foreigner. It, it it slowly builds in, and then all of a sudden that chorus kicks in at the end, and it just brings it brings the house down. But uh, to just add this in in a, in a chorus just doesn't just doesn't fit. Uh, Jealous guy, I like this track. It's a soulful track, great piano playing throughout. Uh, dynamic track as well. It's really really cool. And then finally, happy. They funked it up, f u n k e d, uh, and this version, some slide guitar, uh, cool piano licks, uh, put a bluesy soul feel to this track in happy where. Um, Keith Richards version of course is is, is completely um, opposite raw guitar and everything else I love that song Happy believe it but um, Nas Lofgren did a good um, good version of this one but he just he just funked it up and 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 made it his own obviously with that bluesy soulful track on there so overall a good album uh, it's a good solid album um, with those couple of weak tracks on there. And, and I, I try not to rate albums on, on this, Albums to Discover, but I have to be honest with it. I can't say it's a fantastic album and every song is great. There's some weaker tracks on here, but overall, uh, if you listen to it as an album, uh, it's a great album. And if you um, kind of eliminate those two tracks, it would be a better album. <laughs> but I, 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 he just had to tone down on the chorus on some of those, some of those tracks. Um, and um, but overall, it sounds good. Great playing, great singing. Uh, he's got a great vocal, great guitar. Uh, again, an underrated player, but uh, definitely an album to definitely an album to discover. An artist to discover. He plays great with E Street Band and uh, Crazy Horse, but on his own, he does a fantastic job as well. So let's see what's on the shuffle. See what comes up here. So I'll go to my Discogs. So again, nothing up my sleeve. Go to random item down. Oops, sorry. Wow, the glare. Random item. Oh, the, pardon me, the Tea Party. Edge of Twilight. I love the Tea Party. Great Canadian rock band uh it's kind of a, a 
Jim Morrison lead singer look like. Uh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I wish I could play this track. Heavy trio. Um, just a great Canadian rock band. Um, so looking forward to that one. Anyway, guys, there you have it. We'll talk to you again soon and to have a great day. Bye now.